Hello and welcome to today's webinar, everyone. My name is Jen, and today we're going to be talking about report selections in the donations module. If you're following along in the workbooks that are available for purchase on our website, which is www.churchwindows.com, Today's topic is covered in the Donations 105 workbook on pages 2 through 15. And again, those workbooks can be purchased on our website, www.churchwindows.com. You can also find recordings of previous webinars that we've hosted. If you find that today's topic isn't what you thought it was going to be and you have other questions that aren't covered today. If you go to the Support Center, you'll find all the documents and videos that we have for all the various topics within Church Windows. The version of the software we're currently working with is 21.18.4, as you can see on the screen. And if you have questions throughout the webinar, you can type those into the questions panel of your webinar toolbar. And you can also collapse your webinar toolbar to get it out of the way so you can see more of the screen by clicking the little orange button with an arrow on it. If you are entering any questions, keep them to the topic at hand. Um, or give us a call after the webinar and we can help you with your specific situation. All right, without any further ado, let's go ahead and open up the donations module. And the report selections that we're going to be talking about are going to be the same in lots of different reports in donations. So when you click Reports Export up here at the top, each of the buttons below it will reveal different menus of additional report options. We're going to be mainly looking at the donations log report just for ease and consistency. But as I said, other reports will have this same filter screen, these same filtering options available. So we're just going to go through this screen. I'm going to move it up a little so that we can see it a little bit better. And the first box that you have on the filter tab is to select one specific giver for a report. You can click the down arrow and scroll through that list. If the inactive box right here is checked, then inactive folks will show up in the list, like Joe Frey right here. You can see, um, depending on your screen, uh, his name is in red. It may be a little hard to see if your colors aren't super bright, but the tone is different in the color of the names of the inactive people. You can see also Caroline DeSmit right there. If we scroll through, there's a couple more. So if this inactive box is checked, they will show up. If we uncheck it and we scroll through, now we have no names showing up in red. It's defaulting to sort by name, alphabetically by last name specifically. But if you want it in numerical order, all you need to do is check this sort by giver number box. And that will change the list to be sorted by the giver number. Anyone without a giver number goes down to the end of the list in alphabetical order. If you choose someone and you change your mind, you can click the little X to clear them out. And you can also just tab through people using the arrow buttons right here. Once you select a person, you can choose a pledge for that person if they have pledges in the system in this pledge drop-down. And whatever selections you make, it's going to limit the report to only printing out those selections. And pledge, if I clear out the giver, is no longer available because it's only going to be available if we are selecting a specific giver. 
Now you can also see if we select a specific giver, we can't choose a giver number range. So if I clear out the giver, I can choose a range, but I can't choose a pledge. And if I choose a giver, I can choose a pledge as well, but I can't choose a giver number range. So the giver number range would allow you to select just certain givers. Maybe um, you only want givers 1 through 100. You could do that. And then the X's will always clear out whatever you've entered. If you only want to print one specific account, you can use the account drop-down box to select from your list of accounts. That list is sorting numerically by the ID. You can tell because it's got this little blue arrow. Or you can sort it by the name of the account by clicking on that column header. And that will resort the list by name. Next, we could search for a specific check or reference number if you only want to locate one particular transaction or check, you can type that into this box. The user is referring to the specific user who entered the information that you're looking for. So if you have usernames and passwords that you use to log into Church Windows, you could select just a specific user to filter the report results to only the transactions entered by that particular person. Next are the batch codes. This is another drop-down box where we can choose from our existing batch codes. If you don't use batch codes, you won't have any choices in here, and that is just fine. They are not required. When you're selecting a batch code, you can also either check or uncheck to include batches without a code. We already talked about the giver number range when we were talking about selecting a giver. And so the next field is the date occurred. And depending on which report you're using, this will either default to showing the entire year, the current year, or just today's specific date. Some of them will have today in both boxes when you open it up. You can put in whatever dates you'd like, keeping in mind that the date occurred is the date that you're choosing when you're entering donations versus the date posted, which is the day you're actually sitting in front of the computer entering the information in. So, for example, if today I entered in donations for Sunday the 14th, the date occurred would be the 14th, and the date posted would be today. So that's the difference between date occurred and date posted. Then we have the option to enter transaction numbers, and this is a range. All of these columns on the right that we can enter have from and to information. So if you want just one specific transaction, like the checker reference number, we could put the same transaction number in both boxes, or you can search for a range of transaction numbers by typing in the numbers in the from and to boxes. And then amount is simply the total of the donation itself. So if you only want to print a report of donations between, say, $100 and $500, you could enter those amounts. And if you don't put the decimal and the, the cents after the dollar, it will put that in for you, as you can see. Let's go ahead with that one and click print. Let me put in the dates for the whole year again, just so that we can real quick take a look at what one of these reports might look like.
and then we'll go over the rest of the selections that can be made. So this is just a quick glance at a donations log report for transactions between $100 and $500 for this year. Some additional options we have down here at the bottom are show reversed. So if you go in and reverse a donation because it was entered by mistake or it was entered to the wrong account, you can include those transactions on the report by checking this show reversed box. You can limit it to only certain payment methods. If you want to only see the cash transactions or check, for example, you can use these check boxes by unchecking the ones that you don't want. Then down here at the very bottom, we have show subtotals. If I uncheck that and I click print, there's no longer a line under each um, set of amounts with the total. If I bring it back, you can see now there's a line and it tells me the total amount for each of the transactions. Suppressing repeating transaction data means that it won't reprint the same transaction number for every transaction that shares a number. So if we uncheck that and go back to our print preview, here in the transaction number column, we get the transaction number repeated for all of the parts of the donation that are this on the same transaction number. So if you want to see it listed beside every part of the distribution, you can uncheck it or you can check it and only see the transaction number once per transaction. You can save your selections as default if you want to override what the system default is, if you come in and you make some changes and you want to keep it that way, you can check Save Selections as default. And then if you're printing a whole series of reports and you want them to have um, page numbers that go consecutively, you can enter your own starting page number to change what prints out. And then the show long date and time just refers to the date and time stamp it puts at the top of the report. If I check that box, it goes ahead and spells out Thursday, July 18th, 2019, and the specific time, as opposed to if it's unchecked, it just abbreviates that, so it takes up less space, and we don't have the time listed. The next thing we're going to look at is the Group and Sort tab. All of the reports and donations and membership as well will contain a Group and Sort tab. This doesn't determine what actually gets printed, but it determines the order of the information. So currently we're sorting by giver in ascending order. So that means from the beginning of the alphabet or numerically from lowest to highest. Descending would be the reverse. Grouping by field one is what causes each giver to be grouped together with all of their information, as opposed to if we uncheck it, then it doesn't group Lucy's donations together. It lists her name next to each of her transactions, same with each additional person. So if we recheck to group, we look at that, and we only see the person's name once, and the total goes up top. We can also include separator lines if you want it to be a bit more distinctive between each person. That can be nice sometimes. And you can also show totals only. That would get rid of all of the extra details and just show the name and the total given. Now, you can also change this to any of the other fields 
for a specific donation. For example, we could sort by account instead of by giver. And with our totals only, we get abbreviated information. If we uncheck that, we get all of the details. And we're grouping by each of the accounts instead of by the giver. So you can choose any of these options. We could go by date. And then after you select a main sort, you can then choose additional sorts like giver and account. Let's look at that one. So for that one, we have a date and then each giver is listed. And because we don't have the giver name on our columns tab, this is the next tab we'll talk about, it wasn't showing the givers. So if we try that one more time, now we have the giver names listed. And if we go back to our group and sort, we can also check these group by fields one and two and take a look at how that looks. That gives us even more of a breakdown of the individual people. Or we could flip it and we could put giver second and account first and take a look at that difference. This way we see the account is the heading and then the people are listed below it. So those are some ways we can play with the grouping and sorting. And then on the columns tab, as you saw a moment ago, the visible columns are what will print and the available columns will not print. You can double click on an item to move it from one side to the other, or you can use the arrow buttons to move an item over. can see now we don't have a column for batch code, but we do have a column for comments if there were any comments entered. The final couple of options we have are the fonts, which is pretty self-explanatory. The page header is what's at the very top of the whole page. The column headers are at the top of each column. Let's go ahead and just make that italic for a moment so it looks different and we can see where that is on the printout. And then the body text. So if I click print, you can see these are the column headers in the italics. The, the page header is bold, that's these pieces of information at the very top, and then the rest is normal. You can change the name of the font. Uh, maybe you prefer Arial. You can go in and change each one to a completely different font if you wanted, or you can make them all the same font. Let's make this one Cambria, just so we can see the difference if you did want to make each one a different font. Those are all a little bit similar, but you can see you can change the fonts to whatever you'd like. And then reset to default takes it back to our typical Times New Roman 9.5. The final tab of report options allows us to include membership category indicators. That means if you've created any additional categories besides members and visitors, those indicators, the letter code that you assign to the category, will show up by the person's name if you check this box. And same with the D indicator for donations individuals. If we click print with those options selected, you can see some of the folks have V's beside their name or D's beside their name to indicate if they are members or visitors or donors. All right, so that takes us through everything in the report options for our donations reports. Some of the reports will have additional tabs. For example, the pledge giving analysis has some different information. There's this giving pledging section where you choose if you want to see everyone, only those who gave, only those with specific amounts of giving, or those who did not give. 
And then the same options for pledging. Some reports will have a Givers tab where you can select from membership criteria. If you want to learn more about selecting membership criteria, you can check out our webinar about membership reports. And everything that you can select there is available here in donations on some of the reports. And then some of the donations reports will have an accounts tab where you could select to just print a particular campaign from the drop down. Or you can select only certain of your giving accounts to print by moving them from the available side to the selected side. All right, that concludes today's webinar.